Welcome to the video. I'm Tom. I'm 79. And my unindicted co-conspirator Angela is 69. Today we're looking at how artificial intelligence is becoming a practical tool for staying independent as we get older. Not living longer necessarily, but living better. And there's a difference. If you've hit 50 or beyond, you know exactly what we mean. So let's start with something that we're willing to bet happened to you this morning. You had something in your hand, keys, glasses, your phone, whatever. You set it down somewhere perfectly logical. And 30 seconds later, it's vanished into that dimensional portal that steals socks from the dryer. For me, it's reading glasses. I have four pair scattered around the house like some kind of optical Easter egg hunt. Angela finds this hilarious. But here's where it stops being amusing. For a growing number of older adults, this isn't an occasional frustration. It's constant. It's daily. And it becomes a genuine barrier to living independently. You start second-guessing yourself. Did I turn off the stove? Did I lock the door? Where did I put my medication? That's not just annoying. That's the kind of thing that makes people worry they can't live on their own anymore. And this is exactly the problem that new AI systems are being designed to solve. Now, when we're saying AI and aging, we're not talking about asking Alexa what the weather is. We're way past that. We're talking about AI that's built into devices that provide real practical support. The kind that makes an actual difference in your day, not just entertains you with trivia. And before you start picturing some creepy robot following you around, stop. The AI we're discussing today are practical tools. They use cameras and microphones to understand your environment and what you're doing. They learn from that data to help you in ways that are relevant right in that moment. Think of it as having a very patient assistant with perfect memory. Unlike me since I turned 65. So let's go back to those lost keys. MIT developed something called MemPal, and it's a perfect example of AI solving a real problem without being weird about it. Kitchen. Pal, where's my ring? Your ring was last seen in the kitchen inside a white cabinet next to cups with a window and plants on the right. Turn off the stove. Did you remember to turn off the stove? Here's how it works. You wear a small camera on your lanyard. As you go about your day, the AI watches what you're doing and creates a private, text-based log of your activities. So when you put your keys on the kitchen counter, it notes, keys placed on counter at 2.15 p.m. Later, you ask, hey, pal, where are my keys? And it tells you. Simple. And the results? They tested this with older adults in their actual homes. Without MemPal, people found their lost items about 80% of the time. With MemPal helping, nearly 100%. Now, this isn't some marketing scam. This is peer-reviewed research from MIT. It actually works. But here's what gets even more interesting. Because the system understands context, it knows you're in the kitchen, it knows you've been cooking, it can give you proactive safety reminders. Hey, Tom, did you turn off the stove? That's not just a memory aid. That's a safety tool that could prevent a house fire. As for any safety concerns you might have about data, the good systems keep all this data local on your device, not in some cloud server. On the topic of server, We'd greatly appreciate it if you could toss us a like and subscribe to the channel to help us help others like you with our content. Thanks.
This idea of proactive support extends into health and safety, which is where AI's potential really multiplies. Think about a doctor's visit. You're sitting there. They're talking fast, using medical terms, and you're trying to remember everything they say. An app called Abridge can record that entire conversation and summarize it for you in plain English. Or look at Apple's health features. They're not just counting your steps like a fancy pedometer. The AI spots subtle health trends over time. It can detect a sudden fall and automatically call for help. The whole point is taking complicated medical data and making it simple and actionable. Some of these systems are genuinely clever. There's a smart lighting system called Nobi that's designed to prevent falls, which are one of the biggest risks for older adults if you get up in the middle of the night. And by the way, if you're over 60, you know this happens. The lights automatically come on. They illuminate a safe path to the bathroom. And if you do fall, optical sensors detect it and immediately send an alert. It's trying to prevent the problem and ready to respond if prevention fails. That is smart design. Beyond safety and memory, AI is enhancing day-to-day -day quality of life, breaking down accessibility barriers and fostering human connection. You know, like the stuff that really matters. Look at the evolution here. We went from basic hearing aids that just make everything louder to smart eyewear that can isolate and boost just the voice of the person you're talking to in a crowded room. We went from a magnifying glass to apps that use your phone's camera to actually describe what's in front of you. It's not about making things bigger or louder. It's about intelligently interpreting the world. AI is also being used to fight loneliness, which has serious health impacts, as we know. This is where social companion robots come in, like the one called Ryan. It can hold a conversation, play games, lead you through exercises. I can talk, listen, and remember, but that's not all. In today's yoga session, we'll be doing a sequence of physical movements, slowly exhaling on the way down. Oh, this Five. is the greatest thing. I teach yoga, play games. The letter T. Well done. All kinds of games. Come on. Ah, now you've got me in a tight spot. It's great companionship. Oh, I can't move there. Okay, okay, okay. I love you, Ryan. These are more than funny games. So the games are designed to stimulate, you know, the brain of people, help, you know, to slow down the progression of, you know, cognitive decline and cognitive impairment. So that's very important. What has got you feeling down? So the thing that really touches people is Ryan's compassion and understanding. And sorry to hear that. I think he can sense feelings. He can sense happiness and sadness. When my friends are sad, I want to help them feel better. Now, we know what some of you are thinking. That's sad. Talking to a robot? And yeah, we get it. But you know, if the choice is between a robot companion and crushing isolation, and that's not theoretical for millions of older adults living alone. So let's not be too quick to judge. Looking ahead, what's being developed at tech conferences shows an even more integrated future. The lines between healthcare, daily assistance, and technology are blurring. One of the wildest ideas is digital twinning. Doctors take all of your health data, scans, blood tests, genetic information, and use an AI to build a virtual copy of one of your organs. On this digital twin, they can test drugs or they can simulate surgery without any risk to you. It's personalized medicine at a level we've only seen in science fiction. Now, when you strip away all the technology and the jargon, this innovation is simple. Aging well should be a fundamental right, not a privilege. Technology can be a powerful force to make that a reality for more people. Which leaves us with a final question. The AI, the sensors, the robots, they're all just tools. The real question isn't what technology can do, but what we choose to do with it. How will we use these capabilities to build a future where everyone has a genuine shot at aging with independence, connection, and dignity? Not just the wealthy. Not just the tech savvy, but everyone. That's the question worth asking.
and that's what we'll keep exploring in this series. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. We read and respond to every comment. And if this helped, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Tom Hathaway. Thanks for watching, and just so you know, while I'm the one talking to you, my partner Angela does the heavy lifting behind the scenes to make these videos happen. And we both hope that you enjoyed this one and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.